You've been asking for some guilt-free dessert recipes, or at least some guilt-reduced dessert recipes. So today, I've teamed up with one of my very favorite YouTubers, Alicia from Mind Over Munch, to bring you some tasty dessert ideas that can all be whipped up in a mason jar. Today, I'm gonna show you a delicious brownie, a fantastic plum crumble, and a carrot cake that is to die for. Plus, I've got a bonus recipe that I think you're absolutely gonna love, but you'll have to stay tuned to the end of the video to see it. Before we get to all of this yumminess, take a look at what Alicia has cooking on her channel. Hey, Sarah Lynn, I cannot wait to show you my three dessert recipes in a jar. They are all fruit-filled and vegan. I'm gonna be sharing my lightened up blackberry crisp, my fluffy chocolate raspberry mousse, and my sweet and savory strawberry shortcake. So come on over to my channel, watch some deliciousness, subscribe, and say hello. I know you're gonna love them. Don't all of Alicia's recipes look incredible? Don't forget to head over to Mind Over Munch as soon as you're done watching this video for three more tasty desserts. Now let's get started with our incredible brownie in a jar. What I love about this brownie is that it is entirely gluten-free and made with a surprising secret ingredient, black beans. All I've done is taken a can of black beans, I've rinsed and drained them, and I'm going to put them into my food processor. You definitely wanna use a food processor or a blender for this recipe, otherwise you're not gonna get a nice smooth texture. To my black beans, I am going to add some sugar and some coconut oil. If you don't have coconut oil, you could also use vegetable oil in this recipe, that would work just as well. Then we are going to add our cocoa powder, because what would a brownie be without some cocoa powder? We're gonna to top this all off with some vanilla extract, some baking powder for lift, and a little bit of salt. And then we are going to add two eggs. If you wanted to make this completely vegan, you could totally use an egg replacer. That would work just fine. We're gonna put the lid on our food processor and let it go to work. I like to blend this mixture for two to three minutes to make sure it is totally smooth and well combined. Now that our batter is ready, you have the option to add even more deliciousness. To this, I'm going to be adding some dark chocolate chips and some walnuts for crunch. You can absolutely leave the walnuts out if you prefer. I'm going to stir this all together right in my food processor so I don't have to dirty an extra dish. And then I am going to scoop this yummy batter into some prepared mason jars. But if you don't have those, not to worry, you could absolutely do this either in a cake pan or in a muffin tin. Both would work just as well. I've greased these really, really well with some coconut oil to make sure my brownie doesn't stick. I'm going to fill each cup three quarters of the way full with my batter, and then I'm going to top these off with some extra crushed walnuts. Into the oven they go at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Once they're ready, they are soft, chewy, moist, fudgy, and absolutely incredible. You would not believe that they were made with black beans. Now it's time to talk about our yummy plum crumble. In a large mixing bowl, I've got six to eight plums that I've just given a quick dice to, and to that I'm going to add some cornstarch and some cinnamon. Your cornstarch acts as a thickener. If you don't have cornstarch on hand, you can replace it with some flour. You wanna to toss your plums until they are well coated, and then you're going to add some honey. Now if you don't wanna use honey in this recipe, you could also do this very same thing with some maple syrup or some granulated sugar. Both of those would work just as well. We're going to stir this all together and then we're going to fill each of our mason jars right to the top with our plum filling. Next, it's time to put together our crumble. What's cool about this crumble is that it doesn't contain any wheat at all. So in a bowl, I've got some rolled oats and to that, I'm going to add some crushed pistachios. Pistachios and plums, that is a match made in heaven. Now, if you don't have pistachios on hand, you could totally do this with some walnuts or with some crushed almonds, that would work just as well. For this crumble, instead of traditional flour, we are using some almond flour. You can find this at your bulk food store. We're going to finish this off with some brown sugar and some butter, and then just mix it all together really well with your hands. Then we are going to pile it high on top of our beautiful plums. Into the oven, these go at 375 for between 25 and 30 minutes. If you find the tops are browning too quickly, just lay a piece of foil over them. That will prevent them from burning. Once they're ready, they are ooey, gooey, bubbly, delicious, and best served with whipped cream. Now let's talk carrot cake. This recipe is actually inspired by my baked oatmeal recipe. If you've never tried it before, I highly recommend you check out that video by either clicking this thumbnail or I will leave a link in the description below. So it all starts with some rolled oats in a bowl. For this recipe, you don't want quick oats or instant oats, you want some good old fashioned rolled oats. To my oats, I'm going to add some brown sugar and some baking powder for lift. 
I'm also adding some ground ginger and some ground cinnamon. Both are essential spices for great carrot cake. I'm going to stir this all together well and then set aside my dry ingredients to mix up my wet ingredients. So in a mixing bowl, I'm combining an egg, some milk, some applesauce, and some vanilla extract. We're gonna pour our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients and then we're gonna finish this off with some grated carrots, some crushed pecans, and some raisins. For all you raisin haters out there, they are not essential to the success of this recipe. You can totally leave them out if you want. We're gonna stir this until it's all well combined and then we are gonna scoop it into our well-oiled mason jars. Into the oven these go at 375 for between 25 and 30 minutes. If you find the tops are browning too quickly, again, just cover them with foil to prevent them from burning. When they're ready, they are crispy on top and soft and chewy in the middle. I like to finish them off with a little cream cheese icing and some crushed pecans for good measure. As promised, I have a bonus recipe for you guys that can all be put together in the lids of our mason jars. They are my chocolate peanut butter tarts and they are both gluten-free and completely vegan. We're going to get started by making the crust for these awesome tarts, and it all happens in the food processor. So to my food processor, I am adding some pitted dates, and I'm just going to give them a quick pulse to help break them up a little bit. To that, I am adding some roasted salted peanuts and some cocoa powder. Basically, what we're making is a delicious, soft, chewy, chocolate peanut butter concoction that will be the base of these yummy tarts. We're gonna blend this all together for one to two minutes or until you have a great crumbly mixture that sticks together when you press it. And then we are going to press this mixture into our tart pans. To help these set, we are going to put them in the freezer while we create our filling. So for our filling, I am combining some avocado with some agave nectar for sweetness, and to that I am adding some smooth peanut butter and just a little more cocoa powder. Once the mixture is totally smooth, you can transfer it to either a piping bag or a zipper bag with the edge cut off and use it to pipe your filling into your tart shells. We're gonna top these with some crunchy crushed peanuts and oh my gosh, these are ready to eat. When you're ready to serve them, all you have to do is pop them out of the mason jar lid and voila, you have this gorgeous little dessert that looks very impressive but was super simple to create. I hope you'll give these delicious recipes a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And don't forget to head over to Mind Over Munch to check out three more incredible guilt-free dessert recipes. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Domestic Geek because there's lots more deliciousness where this came from.